wonderful way it is to, to visit you today. And it's really the prayer of my heart that God will be in our midst. It doesn't matter where we would be at this point in time. And that we could really believe and feel and experience God's love and God's help for us with a theme. We will get through this. And then that this is this lockdown period in our country. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you that we can be connected with one another in, in this manner. But we also know that even if we're not connected in this manner, we still are connected with one another through your Holy Spirit. May the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I lead you now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Oh, the 
Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. All washed away from the heavens, mercy streams of the Savior's love for me. I will raise from waters deep into the saving arms of God. I will see. Salvation sons, Jesus Christ, set me free. Hosanna, Hosanna, to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died. And rose again. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lamb that was slain. Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus died and rose again. This past week, we followed the path and the roads of Joseph with a theme, you will get through this. And it's obvious why I have chosen that theme. The reasons be that, or the reason be is that we went through this whole period of time with Jesus, his suffering, the negative things they did unto him because he had to die for our sins. He had to die to help us to be re reunited with God, the triune God. He had to die so that we can live. And then we, we went through the whole, every and each and every disciple and, and the whole way Jesus spoke to each and every one of them individually. And then came the lockdown period. And then we started after that um, after that mini-series as we started with, with Joseph, you will get through this. 
and, and what, what have we seen with Joseph? What happened with Joseph? We saw how his brothers became jealous of him. We saw how they became aggravated towards him because his father sort of spoiled him. His father gave him this beautiful Joseph's cloak. And for many years, there was this, um, this plays and musicals, Joseph and his Technicolor dream coat. And this jealousy towards Joseph became, became so strong that one day when they saw him approaching them with food from their father, they made a plan. Let us get rid of this, this young boy. Is irritating us. And so they did. The oldest brother said, no, no, we can't kill him. I've got another plan. Let us, let us torn his, his technicolor dream coat and, and we, we put it in blood of an animal and we tell our father that an animal caught him and we throw him into that well. So that was the first position that Joseph found him at and in a dry, muddy well. How do I get out of here? How do we get through this lockdown period with all, with all the, the negative around us and also within us, in our minds and in our thoughts? We saw how Joseph got out of the well through his belief in God but also through the hand of God. God that is in control. And then the brothers sold him then to these camel riders from the east. And they then took him to a slave market. That was again another lockdown for unto Joseph, far away from his house, far away from his father that was always there to protect him. And he was there on this marketplace where there was fleas and hate and where they were spat at and where other people would look at them and add onto them and say, you, you're a bunch of nothing. And then he was bought by Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's leaders, prime ministers, very rich man. And then Joseph again came out of the lockdown period in his life. By doing what? By following the rules of his master by giving his utmost, his best, even if he were away hundreds, thousands of kilometers from his house. He had to, he had to learn how to speak Egyptian. He, he had to, he had to, to, to learn their, their ways, their culture, a Hebrew young man, a Hebrew boy. And he grew in stature. Later on, he was, Potiphar was so impressed with him that he made him the chief of his household. And then um, Potiphar's first lady fell in love with Joseph. And she tried to seduce him. And again he stood strong. We have read that during the past uh, week we have read that so many times. I can't do this. I can't come and lay with you because I will really, really make my master feel very hard so. And of course, my God. The rest is history again. She concocted a story screaming he wanted to rape her. He was a shock to Potiphar and off Joseph goes into the jail. And those jails were no joke. Very, very dark. 
faint light would come through somewhere during the day and there he sat again sat again in a in a well this time it's only called jail and there he befriended people and he helped people with their dreams he didn't stop to live he didn't stop talking to God it wasn't easy of course not but he kept on believing there is God is out there God is my stronghold God is my is my savior God is my heavenly father and he will take me through this another ordeal and he told the, the, the butler of, of Pharaoh when, when, you, when, you, when you go free please think of me and he said as we always also do towards one another of course I will think of you I will pray for you he spoke about that I think yesterday morning I will pray for you how often we don't do that too. We walk past one another on the pavements or in town and we say, Good morning, how are you? No, I'm well. I'm just struggling with my youngest child or with my wife is sick. Oh, I will pray for you. Do we do it? Not that often. The same at a funeral. We will flock around the widow or the widower. Oh, I will visit you. Oh, I will bring you curry. Or I will, need, I will invite you for a bride. But soon we forget one another. Out of the heart, out of sight, out of the mind, out of my thoughts. And so Joseph was sitting and waiting. Every morning he would stood up in the jail in that dirty dungeon where he was. And he would take his clothes the one or two pieces that he might have had and put it under under his bed perhaps today perhaps today the butler would tell Pharaoh and two years passed two years passed and Joseph thought I was forgotten but no people might forget you and me but not God People will forget us, but not God. We as human beings do the same with one another that the people did with Jesus Christ. Hosanna, Hosanna. And a few days later, crucify him, crucify him. He's no longer mind peanut in the package we do it with one another but then suddenly one morning the dungeon was the dungeon's doors was was pushed open and a lot of people came in with the guards and they they took uh, Joseph and they said Hebrew come here Potiphar is calling for you Because in the meanwhile, what Joseph didn't knew was that Potiphar was, had, had these terrible dreams. These terrible dreams. And um, at last, the butler re remembered. I'm sorry to, to disturb you, King Pharaoh, but there was this, there was this Hebrew man. And he told me everything that I was dreaming of. You see, God was working. God is working in his own ways and in his own time. And so they called for Joseph. And he was bathed and he was shaved and his hair was cut. And he received new clothes and gold sandals. And there he went to, to Pharaoh. He went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the ruler of the land. 
He spoke the word and it was done. He issued command and it was law. He entered a room and he was worshipped. But on that particular day, he fell down and distracted and disheartened and negative. Because all his wise men around him couldn't, couldn't tell him what was his dreams about. And he was worrying. Because typical politician, or some of us, we don't want anything anything out under our control and there Joseph stood in front of this this man out of his out of his boundary out of his culture but he stood there because he knew God was with me God was within me God was behind me. God was on my side. God was in front of me. He didn't knew what would exactly uh, play out, but he just stayed stay calm. And then the Pharaoh's words came to Joseph. Genesis 41, verse 16. Genesis 41, verse 16. What do we read there? And Pharaoh, that's verse 15, said to Joseph, I've had a dream, and there's no one who can inter interpret it. I've heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. That was a moment. It was a moment for Joseph to hit on his chest and to stand up firm and say, of course I can do it. And what did he answer? It is not I, but God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Wow, in this lockdown, in this horrible time, because he didn't know how this is going to be played out, he said, it's not I, it's not me, it is God. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. And then Pharaoh said to Joseph what he dreamt about the cows and the other poor, very ugly and thin uh, cows, the seven cows, the thin ugly cows ate up the first seven fat cows. And then he awoke and then he fell asleep again in the second dream time. I saw in my dream seven um, ears of grain full and good growing on one stalk and seven ears with withered, thin and blighted by the east wind sprouting after them and the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears. But when I told it to, listen very good, to the magicians, that is verse 24, there was no one who could explain it to me. Pharaoh went to the magicians. He went to the so-called wonder doers. He called them, he paid them, and he said, play for me, show me, show me your tricks. But no one did the trick, so to speak. And then Joseph explained to Pharaoh the meaning of this dream. Wow! Pharaoh commanded a stunning turnaround. And listen to the words of Pharaoh. Can we find such a one as this? A man in whom is the spirit of God? Listen, up, listen to his Pharaoh's words. Can we find such a one as this? A man in whom is the spirit of God? 
because he said that because because Joseph just said in in verse eight in in in, in uh, Genesis forty verse eight he said every interpretation belonged to God every situation belonged to God every interpretation belongs to God every country every every nation belongs to God God is in control. And then what, what did Pharaoh did? He said, I want to turn my kingdom over to you, Joseph. By the end of the day, the boy from Canaan was riding in a royal chariot, second only to Pharaoh in authority. What an unexpected rebound. Rebound. And that is the core of the message here this morning. That is the core of the message here with Holy Communion. That is the core this morning of this whole week's um, Themes in lockdown. God is there. God loves us. God is working. God never, never sleeps. God has got a goal. God has got the future in His hands. As we have here with us, the Alpha and the Omega. And as Romans 8 from verse 38 to 38 says so, so wonderfully, and nothing can take that away from us. Nothing. Nothing can change that around. Now we may ask, 2020, the month of May, the first question we can ask is, is, is Joseph's God also our God? For sure. Is Joseph's God that is now also our God that is in control or was in control of Joseph's life? Is he still in control of our lives? For sure. What is it that Joseph did to keep him going? Joseph didn't do anything. He allowed God to do it. Of course he prayed. Of course he struggled. Of course there were many days where he felt in his heart, I suppose, in misery, in tatters, in negative. Perhaps he cried a lot. Perhaps he would feel the, 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 the rage that would boil up against his brothers. And then there was the worries about his father. Is his father still alive? What is his father thinking happened to him? And then the smallest brother, Benjamin. But he kept on. He kept on knowing in his heart, in his mind, in his subconscious, God, God will will provide because in God's hands intended evil is eventually good when I was in the army we had a troop there he had the nickname of Bobo he was quite a scruffy young man and everyone made jokes or made a joke or cracked a joke unto Bobo. If that was his real name, I never ever found out. We all knew him as Bobo. And everyone walking, the, walking past him would give him a smack behind the head or a kick in the, in the, in the back. Everyone was playing with Bobo. And, and, and seemingly he didn't have a lot of talents or gifts. He was like the, 
the donkey in the camp always had to do the dirty stuff and the negative stuff. But I've noticed one thing from Bobo. He was like a rubber ball. He would always bounce back. Five guys would come, throw him to the ground and make, make, a, make a mockery of, of him. After that, Bobo would spring up, jump up, and he would wipe his, the, the dust from his, from his clothes and he would smile and he would laugh. Bobo would always jump back or bounce back. And that was with Joseph the case. Down and out, in a well, lied about, a complot against him by his brothers and later Mrs. Potiphar. But he bounced back. But through the help the courage of God and the work of God. Because Joseph had an anchor and his anchor was God. His anchor was his father. His anchor was that, that there was always a future looming because of God. Our anchor? Do we also feel down and out? Do we also feel there's no hope for us financially, spiritually? Will our church ever come together again? Will we get through this? Yes, we will get through this. How? Because our anchor is first of all God. God is the same God of Joseph, also our God. He is in control. The next anchor that we have is Jesus Christ. The cross is our other anchor. It's our other anchor. The open grave is our other anchor. The fact that Jesus was resurrected and he, and he was taken to heaven, ascended to heaven, is our other anchor. Then the other anchor that we have is the Word of God. We must study it, we must eat it, we must learn from it, and we must live it. And then the other anchor is the Holy Spirit. The other anchor is our friends in Christ, our churches that we belong to, our families. And then, of course, the other anchor is Holy Communion. It's Holy Communion. And therefore, I would like to lead you now. We praise you, O God, our Father, King of the universe, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the night he was betrayed to bread, to bread, and he gave thanks, and then he broke it, and he said, take this, eat it in remembrance of me and in the same way after the supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And here at our United Church, we would now say together, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again.
Therefore, Lord, we come to your table trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy even to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy on us. And on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Father, so that we may ever live in him and he in us. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for you, keep you in eternal life. Take and eat this in, the, in remembrance. And remember that Christ has died for you to feed you in your heart and in your soul. And the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ was shed for us to keep us also in eternal life and therefore we can drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all mankind. Will you and me get through this lockdown? For sure, we will. For sure we will. Not in our strength, but in the strength of God, the Triune Father, So, while we are in lockdown, while we are in lockdown, excuse me about that, let us just cling to our anchors. And if we feel we can't cling to the anchors anymore, He will never let us go. Oh, oh, oh. 
Malta in the evening dews and dabs. I can read his righteous sentence by the dirt that flurry loves. He's dead, he's marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, is strong, is fortunate, oh, yet sounded forth the trumpet that shall never sound retreat, he sifting out the words of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift to my soul to answer And be jubilant to my faith Our God is marching home Glory, glory Figures you and me as he died to make men holy, let us love to make men free. What God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah.